And of course, the other big event of the day is the OPEC meeting in Vienna, which is unlikely to see any real change to production forecasts from the major members of the oil cartel. And as a result, uh, you've got weakness coming through uh, in oil prices, both in US light crude and in Brent crude. So if we look at US light crude, uh, certainly one to watch out for around just below that $50 a barrel mark. Um, we're still wondering whether we can see any bounce uh, from this point. If we look at Brent as well, you can definitively see uh, that $50 a barrel, or rather 51 in this case, has held back progress for the time being. Nonetheless, it would be wise not to argue with this rising trend, and that's definitely what you've got in place at the moment, uh, with a bit of volatility either side of it, but that's essentially your trend line. You had the Golden Cross in oil prices uh, in mid-May, and since then they've just really gone nowhere. Um, with the OPEC meeting out the way, you could see it move higher. I wouldn't be surprised, really. Uh, there's arguments for saying that we will see a further bullish move in oil prices, but hedge funds and institutional investors have been building short positions in the commodity over uh, the last few sessions. And so really, any firm move below $46 a barrel, um, that's a bit of volatility coming through, certainly over the short term. But if it does go through that, would, that would definitively say that we are headed lower on crude prices once again. A breakout above $51 a barrel, above that high, takes us on towards Brent crude's October high at $54. That would also be the highest level we've had since the end of August last year. Uh, the trend is still up. It does not pay to argue with it. Um, I think we need a real change uh, in direction in oil prices to suggest that we could be off to the races to the downside once again and even then it, it seems hard to imagine how we go all the way back down to the lows of the year uh, back in January because that was driven by uh, key disruptions um, or distortions if you like in the market that aren't really present anymore. And finally, we just round off uh, with gold prices, uh, $1,215 an ounce, recovering again off the lows, but it was quite the pullback in gold from 1300 We did manage to steady the ship around about the 1200 mark, so once again, big round numbers uh, doing their best in markets, as they always do, to prevent further moves to the downside. The RSI recovering uh, for the first time in a few days, as well as stochastic. So I don't think the bullish move is in just yet, but I think if we get back above the 100 day at 1220 you can start to build the case for why gold's weakness has run its course. So I think any failure, however, to get back above 1250 within the next few days um, would suggest that actually we're just seeing a short-term consolidation before another move lower. But really, gold trading in a range now of about 1190 towards 1300 has been the case now since February. Um, nothing really concrete in terms of a continued upward trend. With the 50-day moving average beginning to turn lower, you can almost begin to hear some gold bears uh, roar as they start to wonder whether actually the rallying gold prices uh, that dominated and so dominated news in the first few months of 2016 has actually run its course.